Hi, I'm Chawi Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Um, so a little while ago, I did my 1,000th STEMI. Uh, it's uh, kind of a milestone, I guess. Uh, it was at 2 o'clock in the morning, of course, and um, it was a pretty good case. So the patient is a 60-year-old uh, uh, smoker uh, who walked into the ED with chest pain uh, since earlier that afternoon. Uh, he's a burly farmer type uh, who said he hadn't seen a doctor in 50 years. Uh, his ECG showed an obvious inferior STEMI and we took him uh, straight up to the cath lab. Uh, his cath was notable for diffusely ectatic uh, coronary arteries. His LED and circumflex were ectatic, but without stenoses. Um, the RCA is shown here. Um, you can see that the RCA is ectatic as well, at least into its midsection, and the distal RCA is uh, completely occluded. So um, here's what I was thinking. Um, the RC was clearly uh, large and ectatic, proximally and into its midsection. And then, and then it looks like it's tapered um, uh, to an occlusion. So is the RCA small distally or equally ectatic distally, but just full of thrombus? So the lesion crossed uh, relatively easily. And, um, and, and since I had no idea how big the RCA was distally, I decided to use a small 2.0 millimeter balloon and gently dilate the vessel, uh, hoping to establish enough flow uh, to uh, give me a clue. So unfortunately, that 2.0 millimeter balloon didn't really do too much. Um, but we now see, do see um, hazy dye uh, staining in the uh, mid-RCA. So that helps a little. Um, I'm now thinking that the mid and distal RC are probably just as ectatic and that the tapered look uh, is due to all of the thrombus uh, filling it up. Um, I decide to aspirate some of the thrombus. Now, routine aspiration thrombectomy, as we know, has a class three uh, recommendation, uh, but this was not a routine amount of thrombus. Um, I actually had a tough time getting that uh, thrombectomy catheter down, uh, but what I was able to do it uh, after passing a buddy wire uh, next to my BMW. So um, here we are after aspiration thrombectomy, and it actually looked somewhat better. And now the thrombus burden uh, in the uh, mid to distal RCA is uh, more evident. The more distal RCA, it looks like it might either be uh, dissected or filled with thrombus or, or maybe both. So what now? Uh, aspirate some more, uh, use a balloon to uh, spread the clot apart. Um, flow uh, still wasn't that great. So I decided to use a small long balloon uh, to gently dilate the vessel. I did not want to use a larger diameter balloon because that might embolize a lot of the thrombus downstream and further uh, clog everything up. I also chose a longer balloon uh, to minimize the number of times I would have to inflate and deflate the balloon. Anytime you do that, you could embolize more thrombus uh, down the vessel. So here we are after ballooning. Uh, honestly, not that much different, maybe marginally better. Uh, still extremely heavy thrombus. Uh, so what do I do now? Uh, use a bigger balloon, do more thrombectomy. I decided to reach for the angiojet and do a rheolytic uh, thrombectomy. Uh, with the extremely heavy residual thrombus burden, angiojet does give you a little bit more oomph uh, to pull out thrombus. And notice I have a temporary pacemaker in there. Always do that. Uh, you get high degree AV block and pauses quite often while doing angiojet. And while the blocks usually will reverse pretty quickly, having a temporary pacemaker in there uh, will help keep your teams and your uh, blood pressure down. So I don't use Androjet a lot, uh, maybe once or twice a year, if that. And here is how it works. Uh, the device uh, infuses uh, saline jets at high speeds, which actually travel backwards uh, in the catheter. And that causes a powerful vacuum in the blood vessel that then fragments the thrombus and allows evacuation uh, from the vessel. Now, this whole process is called a rheolytic uh, thrombectomy. 
And as I said before, I always insert a temporary pacemaker before AndroJet uh, due to the possibility of significant blocks, pauses, and profound bradycardia during the procedure. The catheter is also quite bulky and can be difficult to um, maneuver. Uh, you might need to exchange a workhorse wire uh, to a wiggle wire or a stiffer wire uh, to get that catheter down there. And clinical data really is only marginal. Uh, there's an early trial that actually showed possible harm. And the later JetStand trial uh, from 2010 is a little more positive with benefit for ST segment resolution, but there was no significant benefit for scar size, uh, scar size reduction. So IndraJet is not used very often, at least in the coronary side. It is used more in the peripherals, but when you need it, uh, you really need it. All right, so here we are after Androjet. Uh, you see that a lot of the clot was pulled out and the vessel is starting to look better. Uh, the posterior lateral branch uh, looks tiny and I thought it was probably uh, vasoconstricted. There was still a big chunk of thrombus in the mid RCA. But where's the culprit? Where is that plaque rupture that set off the whole thrombus cascade? It still wasn't clear uh, where I needed to stent. Anyway, Androjet worked so well for us the first time that I decided to do it some more and try to capture some more of the clot uh, in the mid-RCA. But this time it didn't do as much. Uh, the mid-RCA clot still looks basically unchanged. So I, I just decided to put them on the uh, glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor and let that do the work. Uh, the personal lateral branch still looks pretty small, but staring at it, it looks like there is a lesion at its ostium. So could an occlusion in that little thing uh, have set uh, everything off? Uh, should I stent it or uh, should I leave it alone? So I decided to sneak a small stent in there. Uh, I figured that it wouldn't take much for the ectatic proximal vessel to rethrombose uh, given its already sluggish flow, especially if the outflow remained bad. So we put in a tiny 2.0 millimeter DES, uh, which I gently post dilated proximally uh, with a 2.5 uh, balloon. So here is the uh, final angiographic result. Actually, not too bad. Um, uh, with the residual thrombus, I decided to continue heparin for a bit, and I also put him on 18 hours of a uh, glycoprotein uh, 2B3A inhibitor. He had uh, no bleeding risk factors. Um, his echo fortunately showed preserved ejection fraction with only mild uh, hypokinesis. The uh, remainder of his hospital stay was uneventful, and he went home uh, two days later on, on, uh, on uh, dual uh, antiplatelet therapy. So the question is, how would we manage him long term? Um, given the ectatic coronary arteries, should he be on long term or even indefinite uh, DAPT? What about anticoagulation with warfarin or even a NOAC? And as it turns out, not much is known. The literature is very sparse and sometimes uh, contradictory. There are no uh, large randomized data as far as I know and no guidelines. Now, I, I did find this meta-analysis uh, published just this year, which uh, does offer some insight. Um, their results uh, seem to suggest that long-term DAT might be beneficial to reduce MACE. The benefit for aspirin monotherapy was less and anticoagulation uh, seemed less helpful, uh, but many have argued that it could be considered in severe multivessel ectasia. And frankly, I wasn't sure what to do for a patient, uh, but I suspect his primary cardiologist might decide to put him on indefinite DAPT, uh, barring any uh, bleeding problems. All right, um, take home messages. Um, STEMIs uh, in ectatic coronary arteries can lead to very heavy thrombus burden, uh, likely due to sluggish flow uh, to start with in the ectatic segments. Uh, these are cases where a uh, bailout thrombectomy should be considered either um, with aspiration thrombectomy or rheolytic androjet thrombectomy or both. Um, these are also the cases where a glycoprotein uh, 2B3A inhibitor or even continued heparin uh, could be useful. And as we saw in our case, uh, sometimes even an occlusion of a small distal vessel can cascade into a huge uh, thrombus burden. The uh, long-term management of ectatic coronary arteries is unfortunately still mostly a mystery, but it looks like there might be some benefit um, from, uh, for a long-term DAT. Thank you for watching.